Hey guys, it's Robert, an ambassador for Christ. And as you know where I go, the kingdom goes. Remember, like, subscribe, share. And as usual, eat the fish, spit out the bones. For some things you may agree with, some things you may not. So take the goodness in and spit the bones out far, all right? Anyway, before, before I go on, I just want to say that we are trying to uh, raise 200 pounds for my because uh, my brother wants to go out and he wants to feed the homeless down there in Brighton over the next coming weeks. So we're trying to raise 200 pounds. So if you want to donate a pound, two pound, 10 pound or 200 pounds or whatever you want to donate, um, if you want to go check out my brother's um, YouTube channel, at, you know, go to I am Colin Edwards. His vlog is awesome. You're going to love it. Even if you don't donate, check out his vlog. You're going to like it. All the videos is, is really, really good stuff. Um, and, oh, oh, and, you know, if you don't want to go to the, to the blog you, and you want to, if you don't want to go to his blog and you want to donate, just donate down the bottom. Uh, my email address is at the bottom and I'm going to pass the money on to him and there'll be videos and all the rest of it of what's going on. He's got a Facebook page and everything. So just go and check out his video anyway. I'll check it, check out his, his, his YouTube channel. Anyway, let's move on. Power. Now listen to this, right? I'm going to share with you, or this revelation about cherubims is going to blow your brains out. This revelation about cherubims is going to, you're going to get knocked out. You're going to be laid out on the floor because it is that potent. It's that powerful. I've talked it up now, haven't I? So I better deliver. <laughs> I don't need to deliver. He needs to deliver. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's go into this. Let's go into a little bit of detail. Now, I've done a video, uh, something about demons and what Christians need to know. That's it. What Christians need to know about demons. That's a video I've done last week. And I've had a few um, WhatsApp messages. WhatsApp me down the bottom. My number's down the bottom. Donate down the bottom. All the rest of it's all in the description. And I had a few people, a few comments saying, you know, go a bit deeper. Talk about angelic ranks and all this stuff. And I'm like, when I talk about angelic ranks, it's not the way your pastor speaks about angelic ranks. It's not how you've been taught. Because it's going to be something crazy. Something like, what, sunshine? <laughs> it's that deep. Now, let's go into it, all right? Now, cherubims. Cherubims are the second angelic rank. First you have seraphim, then you have cherubim. They're number two, okay? And in the Bible, or throughout the Bible, there are seven cherubims in the Bible. Seven that are named. Or seven that are, are spoken about. Seven cherubims. Now, I'm going to start with the first two. The first two cherubims named in the Bible are the two cherubims that God sent to stand beside the tree of life with flaming swords that pointed in every direction to keep the way of, of the tree. All right. It said that these two cherubims were by the tree to guard it and they had flaming swords. And we know by biblical picture language, a sword is normally the word of God. The word of God is a sword. So if a spiritual angelic being turns up with a sword, it's probably the word. Okay, because the Bible says that the word is a two-edged sword. Or when Jesus Christ came back, he, he devoured with, or the two-edged sword came out of his mouth and it devoured and, and judgment and all the rest of it. So a sword is, you know, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Picture language all over the place. This is how you understand the scriptures. You, got, you have to understand the picture language. So a sword is a sword of the spirit. It's the word of God. It's, it's a flaming sword. No more time, that's judgment, because it says that when the flame came out of God's mouth, it, it, he consumes um, with a consuming fire that comes out of his mouth it, and it consumes everybody, okay, through judgment. So we know they had these two, these two cherubims had swords that was a word, and the word was fire, judgment. Woo! So standing with a, with a word from God, that's judgment, that is the flaming sword. Quite powerful. We could dig that out yourself and study it out, but it's very, very interesting. They're the two cherubims that was named. Now, I'm going to talk about four cherubims that's named. Now, this is going to, now this is going to, this is mind boggling, all right? And, and they're going to go in, all right? So now, Ezekiel said that he, 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 he saw a vision. He saw a, a, a whirlwind enfolding itself. And it was like unto an amber and unto a brass. And it came out from the north. And we know that's where heaven is, in the north. Up. Oh, we're going to another, another, uh, in, in another session. But this whirlwind was coming out, all power coming out. And he said that he saw cherubim. And he starts to, he starts to speak about these cherubim. How these cherubims, there was four of them, all right? There was four cherubims that he saw in his heavenly vision that happened in Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 8. Chapter 1 and chapter 10. You, it happened. <laughs> you know, look it, look it out for yourself. But a lot of people get confused with the imagery about the wheel within the wheel and all this stuff. And, you know, people get a bit confused. But it's not confusing at all. 
You see, there was four cherubims, okay? And each cherubim had four wings, yeah? And each cherubim's wings touched each other, meaning that I'm a cherubim, I have two wings like this, yeah? Then the other cherubim that's here, he has two wings like this. So my wing is touching this cherubim's wing, yeah? And that cherubim over there, their wings are touching, so it makes a square. Do you understand? I'm at one corner like that, the other cherubim's at the other corner, other corner, other corner, okay? So it's a square. So there's one cherubim here, we are and all their, wings, all their wings are touching. It's a cherubim here, and his wings touch that cherubim, touch that cherubim, so it's a square. All right? So saying this cherubim, the cherubims were all, wings were all touching. And it says their body went down to one. Good. Then it said they had four faces. Now this is powerful. These four cherubims had four faces. One of an ox, one of a man, one of a, a, of a, a, a lion, one of a eagle. Yeah? And we know that they're the four faces of Christ because we have four gospels. We have, the, we have uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. If you read the book of Matthew, it portrays Christ as the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king, the one who came to fulfill prophecy. That's how Matthew speaks about Jesus in the book of Matthew. Then you have Mark. In the book of Mark, Jesus Christ is portrayed as an ox, and an ox is a beast of burden. And we know that the book of Mark was written, was dictated by the... <laughs> We're going to go in. We're going to scramble someone's head. <laughs> the book of... The book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark was dictated by Peter to Mark. Peter dictated, Mark written down, but the Gospel was written by Mark, but he was dictated to by Peter. And we know that Peter is a no, Peter, the Apostle Peter is a, is a no-nonsense dude. He's always moving. What's a quick way? Do this. He was, he was a no-nonsense guy, all right? And in the book of Mark, um, Jesus Christ is portrayed as an ox, a beast of burden. That's why there's only 16 chapters, and in those 16 chapters, Jesus Christ is moving. He's healing. Heals this one, goes here. Heals that one, goes here. Prophesies, go here. And he's always moving, okay? A beast of burden. Then Luke portrays Christ as a man. He's humanity. Behold the man of God. No, sorry, behold the man who take up away the sin of the world. And it, it talks about his humanity, because that's the reason why uh, Luke's genealogy goes from, um, uh, I think it goes from, his mum, all the way back to Adam, yeah? Then you've got, um, it's, it's, it's humanity, he really brings his humanity, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, across. Then you've got um, John. John brings forth Christ's divinity, he speaks about Christ as God. Because in the beginning of his gospel, he says, in the beginning was the word, the pre-incarnate one. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And it speaks about Jesus Christ as, or it speaks about Jesus Christ's divine nature, Jesus Christ as God. Powerful. So these these cherubims now have four faces, and they reflect in the, the four different faces or the four different characteristics of Christ. Woo! This is quite deep, right? See, everyone sees Jesus Christ differently. Some people see a poor Jesus. Some people see a rich Jesus. Some people see Jesus as a prophet. Some of people see Jesus Christ as the Son of God. People, it's, how do you see Jesus? Doesn't mean that anyone's wrong, this means that what angle you're looking at him. I'm talking about in, in context. When I say not everyone's wrong, I'm talking about in context of scripture, okay? <laughs> that's another conversation. I don't want to go off on that one because that's a rabbit hole and that goes somewhere else. So, back to these cherubim now. They're all hold, they're all pointing. They're all they're all like pointing to each other, and they all have four faces, okay? And Ezekiel says that above them was a firmament. This is powerful, right? He said above their head, they were holding up a firmament. Woo! And you know who was on the firmament? There was a, there was a, um, it says, uh, Ezekiel said that there was a, a, um, a throne on top of this firmament. And on the firmament, sitting on that, the person who was sitting on that throne was the likeness of, a son of, of the Son of Man. That's what he said. He was like the likeness of the Son of Man. But I think that's quite tr crazy. It's because Daniel saw the same thing. And he said, it's ancient of days. His, his hair is white as wool. There's a rainbow around about his head. That's what Daniel said. He saw the same thing. But he saw it from a different angle. Woo! Depending on how you see Christ. People see him as a deliverer. Other people see him as a, a, as a, as a healer. Other people see him as... Do you know what I'm saying? You see him as different things. Depending on how you're looking at Christ. So I'm not saying Daniel was wrong. I'm not saying Ezekiel was wrong. No contradiction. Just looking from a different angle. It's... Deep. Now this is what this is the thing that's gonna make your brain pop, right? 
So this is the, this, the, the four cherubims are holding up this firmament, and on the firmament is, is, a, is a throne, and Christ is on the, or, or, yeah, Christ is on the throne, or we say, the Son of Man is on the throne, the Ancient of Days is on the throne. There's four of them holding it up, the firmament, right? And in the Bible, it says that there's four pillars that hold up the earth. And we know that heaven or earth is, is meant to be a, repl re re a replica of heaven. And instead of having cherubims holding up the four corners of the earth, it's got pillars. But in heaven or God's throne, it's got four cherubims. I think I'll just leave that one there. I just thought that was quite interesting. So that brings the six cherubims. <laughs> Are you still with me? That's the six cherubims. Now there's one more cherubim that's not that's spoken of. This is deep, 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 deep. It's your mind's gonna pop now, okay? The seventh cherubim spoken about is Lucifer in the Bible. So he speaks about the um, two cherubims in Genesis chapter three. Then he speaks about the other four cherubims that's in chapter Ezekiel one and ten, I think it is, or one or eight, somewhere around there. Then it speaks about the last cherubim in Ezekiel twenty-eight. And we know that it's Lucifer. It speaks about how he was bright, how he was, um, sorry, how he was, uh, all this light was inside him and all this beauty and all the rest of it. Now this is what's deep, okay? He's the seventh one no named in the Bible, seventh cherubim. And we know that in biblical numerology, seven is the number of perfection. Ooh. So Lucifer is the seventh cherubim named and he's the perfect cherubim that's why the bible says that he was perfect in beauty he was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him <sighs> it's getting deep and all these cherubims look different and some cherubims have four faces this, lucifer has all light and he has music inside him gold and he has all these different lights coming out of him and he was full of wisdom then you have another two cherubims that are by the tree of knowledge they have a flaming sword they have the word of judgment in their hand Ooh seven cherubims it's powerful i know you haven't heard cherubims like spoken to or talk like this before because it's deep so anyway back to what i'm saying now he's the seventh cherubim named in the scriptures all right and we know that seven and that number of perfection that's why lucifer was the, per the perfect he was the perfect cherubim he was the perfect angelic being that's why it says that he was the angel that that covered he was the angel that covered all the other angels Goes into that he's, a, he's actually the angels, the angelic priest, but that's a whole different. I've done covered that in other videos all over the place. Um, so he's number seven. Now this is where it gets spooky. Let's go a bit deeper. This is where it gets crazy. You see, if you really think about it, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, in Revelation, uh, in the book of Genesis, in um, the Garden, Lucifer actually appears first. But we don't know he's a cherubim until we get to Ezekiel 28. But Lucifer is actually inside the Garden of Eden. The Bible says that you was in Eden, the Garden of God. It speaks about how there was a time when all the sons of God were perfect in the book of um, Job. It says that all the sons of God, um, God said to Job, where was you when I laid the foundation of the earth where all the sons of, of God and all the sons of the morning sang for joy and everybody clapped for joy. So there was a time when all the angels, everything was perfect. Okay. So there was a time when Lucifer was inside the Garden of Eden and he was in his perfect state. You could proof text that in um, uh, Ezekiel 28, okay? This is where it gets spooky now. So Lucifer's actually named first as the first cherubim out of all of them, really, if you look at it that way. So it would work out this way. Lucifer is named first. So, sorry, according to the scripture, how I just sp spoke to you, Lucifer is, is named last as the perfect cherubim at the end. But if you read it the other way, like if you read it in how we read it to you now, he was the first cherubim that was inside the Garden of Eden. But we didn't know he was a cherubim, okay? So that would make him what? That would make him the first cherubim named and the last cherubim named. <laughs> so depending on how you're going to read what I just said, the first, remember I read it the first time, saying that he's named last in scripture as a cherubim. He's identified last as the last cherubim, but in a but we know that from Ezekiel 28, we know that he's a cherubim, so that means he was actually a cherubim, the first cherubim that was in the garden. So that makes him in two places, so he's first and last. So it makes it if you read it that way, um, uh, Lucifer was in the garden, the serpent was in the garden, and he was named first. Then the other two cherubims that's by the tree was named second, that's three. Then the four that hold up the hold up the firmament, that's seven. So depending on how you read it. Lucifer is either first or he's last. Making him what? 
trying to be the Alpha and Omega. I thought that's quite interesting because the only person that can be the Alpha and Omega is Jesus Christ. So I'm just trying to show you a different way of looking at it where, where Lucifer is trying to be God. He said that I am God. He said that I shall, I shall, I'm, I'm drawing for the sword. <laughs> in um, Isaiah somewhere, in Isaiah chapter, uh, thank you Lord, in Isaiah 12, was it 14? 14, 12. It says, um, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, thy son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground like this week in the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will send up into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the, the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation and the stars of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So what am I trying to say? That everything that Lucifer done when he fell was trying to be like the most high in every area. Now, I was talking to my wife the other day and I said to her that the Bible is infinite and you can never ever study it all out because... It's always another way to go. It's always a way to nap. Like, for example, if you got 11, you think, yeah, I've got 11. Then God was throwing a zero out there. You're like, hold on, I've got 110 now. Then God, and you think, oh, I've got 110, right. And God will say, okay, let me throw another two out there. And you think, hold on, I've got 1,102 now. So what's my point? Doesn't matter where you look in the scripture, God always multiplies. It, it's, it's infinite. You can never study it out because there's always revelation. Revelation upon revelation, precept upon precept, peel it all there a little, like an onion, layer after layer. And that's what we have to do, study out the layers. So that is my deep, that's the mind-blowing revelation I've got to share with you about cherubim, which I thought was quite powerful. And you know what? I probably could go deeper. There probably is, there is a little more because seraphims, number one. I want to talk about seraphims another time. Ser seraphims roll with, with God, you know. Every time you see God, you see two seraphims roll up. But I'm gonna Woo! And you know what? <laughs> it's just so powerful, yeah? It's just so powerful. You see, Moses, when Moses looked up in Mount, when Moses was in Mount Sinai, God said, make the, the Ark of the Covenant according to what you, the pattern of what you see in heaven. And what did he see? He saw a box. What did he what did <laughs> what did Moses make? He made a box, right? With a lid. Four corners with the poles going through it that the Levites held on their shoulders. Same thing. Cherubims held it on their shoulders. The glory of God. The, the mercy seat. Woo! The, mer the angels are holding up the mercy seat of God. It's in the middle. You see? And that's the same thing that Moses was holding, that Moses saw and he brought down. He said the same thing. He made the box, the top, with the mercy seat and the two cherubims and all the rest of it. And he had the two staves. Same thing. Moses saw what Ezekiel saw. They all saw the same thing. They saw this square box being held up. Just like the earth. But... <laughs> That's another conversation. I've got another revelation on that that's going to make your head spin even more. It's Rob and Ambassador for Christ. Remember, like, subscribe, share, and what's at me down the bottom is what ask questions on the rest of it. I've been answering questions and voice mailing people. It's been quite interesting. And also, remember, check out Iron Colin Edwards for the appeal, and I shall see you guys next video. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be powerful as usual. See you guys later.